because I said, I, I'm not vaccinated. I had COVID January 11th. It, my, my symptoms were very, very mild. I, I, I don't understand. So I, I tested, you guys, have the, you guys have all this data. I tested 2.70 in April. Now October, months later from having uh, the actual virus, now I'm testing at 17.79. And all she could say to me, she says, you know what you need to do, young man? She said, you need to go give blood so other people can get what you have. Amen, glory to God. So the first question I have for you is, how did you get COVID? So I'm not too sure where I initially got COVID, okay. uh, but I tested positive for COVID on January 11th, 2021. Okay, how was the test performed to find out that you were positive? So it was actually by nasal swab. So I okay. uh, went into a local urgent care in Bakersfield, California. And um, what it ended up happening was, is I had some symptoms. I had a fever for a couple of hours. And then after my fever, I began to lose my taste and smell. And that was generally the whole outcome of COVID, but I did go in, I did get a test, and the test uh, resulted in a positive, and that was January 11th of 2021. All right, did this affect your family as well when you had it? Yeah, so so um, I'm assuming I got COVID and then brought it into my family, so uh, my wife and a brother who was living with us at the time and all of my children, um, you know, we all got kind of hit by COVID, but generally all that we saw was very, very mild symptoms, um, very, you know, Pretty low fevers, but fever nonetheless, and then loss of taste and smell, but that was generally about it. So were you surprised on the duration of the COVID that you had that wasn't very long? Yeah, I actually was surprised. So I, I thought that um, it was going to be a lot worse. I thought that I was going to do so well. You know, there's all kinds of thoughts. There's a lot of fear today of people who, hey, you know, I'm going to get COVID and I'm going to die. And that's generally what's what's being given out there today. So, so I didn't know what to expect, but I... I definitely thank God for the outcome of, of, of uh, my experience. Yeah, for me, myself, I had COVID for three weeks and I felt miserable. The headaches, the loss of taste and smell, just exhausted, you know, the fever. Yeah, for three weeks, me and my wife both had COVID and we felt horrible. You know, but talking to you for a couple of days, you had COVID and you were over it very fast. Right. You know, I mean, your immune system extremely strong, which you're going to be able to share a lot of testimony about your immune system over the last year and a half, what's taking place in your immune system. Right, so, so the, one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to do this interview today and why I felt so inclined to was because over the last 10 months, I've just been just gathering data, right? There's not too much data on natural immunity. There's not too many um, places that are putting it out. I'm, this is not a political stance. This is not something that I'm trying to do to push one side or another. This is simply, hey, I got some data. I want to share it with you. I want to share it with the world and um, show that, hey, natural immunity is a thing. And I believe that natural immunity is a thing, not because simply I have evidence to prove natural immunity, but simply because by design, God has created us, according to Psalm 139, he has created us in our mother's womb and that we're fearfully and we're wonderfully made. So by his design, my body has responded to this virus to fight it off. And so um, I have some pretty cool data, pretty interesting data. I have, um, so I have, I, I'm not vac vaccinated. I don't plan on getting vaccinated. My hope and my trust is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, I'm, so I'm standing by faith, right? Hebrews 11:6 6 says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. For those that come to him must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So at this time, um, I haven't, you know, and actually, as a matter of fact, when I got COVID and I sat with the doctor, uh, the doctor didn't prescribe me anything. Um, he actually pre prescribed like vitamin C to my wife. He prescribed um, maybe some, some fever reducers, but he actually didn't give me anything. And so I was actually kind of surprised by that when we were picking up the medication from the pharmacy. I was just like, man, I didn't get anything. So I just kept kind of going. But I did. I obviously I took um, like the airborns like that just have vitamin C and all the vitamins in it and things like that. But that's about it. So would you acknowledge that it's real, that COVID is real? Absolutely. It's a true sickness. I know I was sick. I was really sick. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. COVID is definitely a, a real virus for sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, so anyway, in the last 10 months. Something I'd read online about the UK, it's been a while since I read it, but it actually said in the UK, one thing we're doing is going back and testing these people who had it a year ago to see if the antibodies are still in their body. But the numbers are super, super low on the antibodies. Like something we've seen is one in 2%, a small percentage of antibodies remain, but they're still watching to find out if the body's able to beat this. And something that you'll share today is your body's astronomical in antibodies. So would you acknowledge that our bodies, like you said earlier, are fearfully and wonderfully made? In what way are you saying that, that our bodies can recover and fight off a sickness on its own without assistance from other things, if need be? 
Exactly. We have a wonderful creator, like I had quoted in Psalm 139, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, and that God, by design, has created our bodies to be able to fight off diseases and, and viral infections or any type of virus. The way that God has created us naturally is to be able to fight off these diseases, and I actually have evidence today to prove that. All right, so where did you get this faith from? Is this something in your walk that you've received in your walk? Absolutely. So God has increased my faith for the last years. I've been serving Christ now for about nine years and almost nine months. Uh, he's been faithful. I've watched him heal uh, diseases of all kinds and sicknesses and cancers. And I've seen him raise people from the dead. I've seen him do wonderful, wonderful things. And so at the name of Jesus, I've witnessed all these things. So I, I know that God is able and his will is perfect. Um, so I, I've, throughout this time and throughout this entire pandemic, I've, I've chosen to trust in him and to rely on him. To, to help me. And his will is perfect. There's a million other things that I could die from today. I could walk across the street, get hit by a car. I could get shot. I can get stabbed. I can fall down, hit my head the wrong way. I could be working off of a ladder, hanging up a light and all kinds of things can happen. So there's a million other things beside COVID that we can die from. Um, so I'm putting in my hope and my trust to know, Hey, God's, God's written my days in his book and he knows the beginning and the ending. So I'm trusting in him. If he wants me alive, I'm going to be alive. And if he wants me gone, then I'll be gone. So that's your go-to. That's your initial go-to. That's where you go. If there's something going on with your body, with your mind, physically, spiritually, mentally, you're going to Christ for the right. healing. Right? I'm not saying that I'm perfect, but what I'm saying is, is my hope and my trust is in the Lord. All right. Do you believe that God uses doctors? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, all right. What would you like to share about your antibodies or a little bit more if you'd like to share? Yeah. So again, so all of this is a personal testimony. So I'm not speaking for the entire world. I'm not speaking for every community. All I can speak for is to myself. And so... I continue to hear on the news and on different social media channels that there's no, there's not a lot of evidence for natural immunity. There's not a lot of evidence for antibodies that generally what they're saying is, is antibodies last three months. Even my own work uh, shared with me that no, no, your antibodies are only good for three months after you've had the virus and then you're completely unprotected and that's why you need to be vaccinated. And so um, what I did actually, were you going to ask a question? Uh, yeah, what are some of the numbers? How would you know that your body has produced antibodies? Is it a test? Is it a, is it a blood test? Is it a, what kind of test is it that you take to determine whether or not you've got it? So, so the test is actually, it's called a, uh, a SARS-CoV-2 IgG um, blood test. Okay. And so they take your blood, they send it off to a lab. Mine happens to be Westpac Labs. And they send it off and then they determine whether or not um, you have antibodies, active okay. antibodies. But the only way that you can produce antibodies is if you've actually had it. Correct. So your body's already working because it's it's fighting the virus or fighting against it, or it's already fought it and now it's producing them naturally. Now I will, as obviously just disclaimer, so I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, I don't have any type of medical background whatsoever. So I'm just a simple man um, who trusts in the Lord and believes by design that God has created us so naturally and wonderfully and fearfully that we could fight off this stuff naturally. But you'll be able to actually show that with your testing Correct. of the numbers that are off the charts for antibodies that you've got now. Right. And that's something that was actually prayed about a while back. And, and for you to actually have like something as an ability to show others, like for a, uh, like a point of a test for people to see that God can produce antibodies and make them so powerful that it'll be seen by many. Right. And something we'd actually prayed about. And of course it's came to pass. Right. Yeah. So, so uh, just to kind of share again, this is my personal testimony. So uh, I tested positive for COVID January 11th of 2021. Um, in April, uh, April 28th, actually 2021, I came into contact with somebody who had tested positive for COVID. And, and my work's uh, requirement is that if you come into contact with somebody who has tested positive for COVID, you yourself have to go be tested. And while I was at work one day, I was actually uh, sharing with another uh employee uh, regarding COVID and we were just talking about it and they had mentioned that they went and got a blood test done and how their blood test revealed that they had a lot of antibodies eight months after they had had the virus and even their doctor told them you don't need to be vaccinated you have enough antibodies in your system it's actually doing the job of what the vaccine would be doing and so but actually better right but actually better because it's natural your body made it right, right. your body's made in a lab it. somewhere correct yeah. right so so on April 28th, I came into contact with somebody. So I had to go get a nasal swab. So January 11th, I had COVID, confirmed COVID. And obviously, I'll, and I'll post all this, all these pictures for everybody to see. But 
Um, so confirmed COVID by nasal swab January 11th. Uh, April 28th, I took another nasal swab and it ended up becoming, it came out as negative. So I didn't test positive for COVID though I was in direct vicinity of somebody who did and they were actually sick maybe for like a week. But nonetheless, when I went to go get my nasal swab, I actually went and got one of those IgG antibody blood tests. And when I got the blood tests, um, it actually came back as having on a Richter scale, whatever that Richter scale is, of 2.70. And so what was explained to me by the doctor was, is that on the blood test, 1.0 is the neutral. So anything below 1.0 means no active protection, no antibodies, but anything above 1.0 would be active protection. And so on April 28th, remember I had, I had COVID January 11th, on April 28th, I tested uh, positive for COVID on a blood test, not a nasal swab, but on a blood test, and it showed that I had 2.70 um, on the whatever the Richter scale that okay. they use for active protection of antibodies. So that's pretty common, that number there probably. I, I don't know, see that's... Two. If they're able to tell it's above a one, so it's... Correct. It's antibodies are being produced. Right, so so I'm actively protected is what I, okay. what I was told by the doctor. And so, and also initially, the doctor had mentioned to me that um, I, even though I'm, I'm past some time since I've had COVID, but not to rely on them because the antibodies would continuously go down. This is three months after the fact when you had this test done. Correct. So it's 90 days later. Okay. Right. Right. And even as I submitted this to my employer, my employer, we actually have a doctor on staff and my employer said, uh, antibodies are only good for three months. So, so we can't accept your antibodies as any proof of, of protection. Okay. Okay. Right. So. What happened next? So, so I took this, I just kept it. I said, you know what? Um, it's a great baseline. And so what I wanted to do was, is I wanted to take that baseline and then start comparing it. So as time would go on, as long as I didn't get sick, I would continue to take these blood tests. And so um, that was obviously in April. I took a blood test. I ended up coming into contact with somebody else um, who had COVID or, or I wasn't I think I had an ache in my stomach, so I said, you know what, my employer said, you need to go get tested before you can return back to work, so I did. So on May 24th, um, I took another nasal swab and it came back as negative, so still. So four and a half months just about later, okay. Right, right, so May, May 24th, I took another nasal swab and it came back as negative. And so this is important to have this type of data because in between, um, in between blood tests, I'm testing negative for COVID-19 and up until today's November 4th, 2021. So up until November 4th, I have not, uh, I haven't retracted COVID again. So I haven't had COVID again okay. uh, since January 11th. Okay. Okay. And so, uh, I went back, uh, it'd been a little bit. So October 15th, I had actually went back to an urgent care. I wanted to get my blood tested again, just to see where I was at. So almost 10 and a half, 11 months, just about. Well, so between nine and 10 okay. months. Okay. So, um, and so what I wanted to do was, is I just wanted to see, hey, if I have active protection, I do. If I don't, I don't. But it's good for me personally to know. I'm not trying to prove anything to anybody. I'm not trying to say, hey, listen, this is the only way. I Listen, like I said, I'm not vaccinated. I just want to see, am I actively protected from this virus? And so if you recall, on April 28th, I tested uh, positive in my blood test for uh, antibodies at 2.70 uh, being on a Richter scale. Again, what's hard about the antibody blood test is because there's not too much information online about it. So because there's not enough information, I'm just running in circles saying, what does this mean? The rest of the world's getting booster shots for different variations. They're trying to fight this off each, every three to six, nine months. They're going back in and getting more shots for the different variations. And of course your body, we're gonna find out, is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. You're gonna find out in just a minute. Right, so, so I went to the office October 15th, I went and had my blood drawn again. And about three or four days later, I got a call and they had let me know, hey, listen, um, we got your blood test back. You tested positive again for antibodies. And we want to let you know it's uh, 1779. And I said, 1779, do you mean like 1.779? Mm -hmm. And they said, no, sir, 17.79. And I was blown away. I was like, 17.779? I said, that doesn't make any sense. I said, that's like, you know, extreme antibodies. And she said, yes, you have extreme antibodies. And this is what this urgent so your body just took off to fight this. Right, right. So my body is actively producing antibodies to fight against this virus. And what's nice is it's fighting against this virus or whatever variant. Again, because even when Delta came through, I didn't get sick again. My body was actively fighting off any infection, any virus or disease, whatever they're calling yeah. it okay. these days. So... So what ended up happening was, is I, by my surprise, I was actually blown away by it. I was, I was excited, but also I didn't still, I don't know what it means. 
And so I went down to the urgent care and to pick up this because I want to make sure I have it on paper. Well, just science-wise, we can see that it's getting stronger rather than weaker. Right. You're actually growing in strength. Your body, your immunity is getting stronger and stronger and stronger rather than weaker and weaker. Right. And and so it's 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 opposing contrary belief, right? So or popular belief. It's contrary to popular belief. So mm -hmm. so I'm sitting here with this data and I'm thinking to myself like, man. You know, I, I, and I wanted to get the paper first because I wanted to make sure that it wasn't a 1.779 and it's just getting lower, but I still had some antibodies. So when I got the paper and to read that this SARS-CoV-2 um, blood test came out as 17.79 and then it shows, again, the Richter scale, anything below 1.00 is negative. Anything mm -hmm. above 1.00 is active protection. And so I remember getting it and I stood at the counter there at the urgent care and I said, ma'am, you're going to have to explain this. She says, hold on, let me go get somebody. And then, so she brought somebody back and said, sir, listen, this is what it is. And she expressed anything above 1.0. So you have active protection right now. And I said, ma'am, you don't understand. I need better understanding because I said, I, I'm not vaccinated. I had COVID January 11th. It, my, my symptoms were very, very mild. I, I, I don't understand. So I, I tested, you guys have the, you guys have all this data. I tested 2.70 in April. Now, October, months later from having uh, the actual virus, now I'm testing at 17.79. And all she could say to me, she says, you know what you need to do, young man? She said, you need to go give blood so other people can get what you have. Amen. Glory to God. So, and I turned and I said, what I have is, is I'm, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made by an awesome that? creator, uh -huh. Yahweh. Yeah. Psalm 139. Uh -huh. It's actually... Uh, Psalm 139 verses 13 okay. through 14 and it, just for quoting it says in 13 and 14 for you have possessed me in my in my range you have covered me in my mother's womb I will praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made marvelous are your works and my soul knows them right well so you expect your body to get better you're expecting God to strengthen you and make you stronger you expect that you're not thinking hey I'm going to be worse or this you're actually believing who God says he is based on his word Right, and, and I trust in him, and I'm, and I'm trusting in him to either, if, if he wants to give me antibodies, then I'll have antibodies, but if I don't, then I don't. So I trust in his sovereign will to know that, hey, God, your, your will is perfect for me, and so if, if you want, to have, want me to have this act of protection, then I'll have the protection. Some people's going to say that you got crazy faith. I wouldn't say that my faith is crazy, right? I'm just saying that I, I'm trusting in the Lord and saying, hey, God, you're faithful to, uh, to protect me, and, and he has thus far. And again, this is, a, this is a personal testimony. So I'm not saying that, hey, this is for you. This, no, I'm saying that God is faithful to his word. Amen. He is. He is. Right, right. And so um, one of the verses that we were talking about earlier was Psalm 103.3, that God forgives all our iniquities and he heals all our diseases. 100%. Right? So, yeah. so he's able to do that. And so, so I look at the data that I have here today, and I prayed a lot about this. I asked God if I should even bring this to light, if I should even say anything about it. And I'm just encouraged because I know that th there's not a lot of data like this out there right now. Well, something that speaks for this, too, is you actually have the science behind it. You have God who made our bodies. You're trusting what God says. But at the same time, you can confirm it for all those the science buffs who don't believe in God. You can say, yes, God has healed my body. And same thing here. Many years ago, I had a heart. or I have a heart, but it had a shunt in it. Had a hole. It was enlarged. I went to the doctors. I needed heart surgery. Didn't right, go. Right. I prayed in Jesus' name. I went back. The doctor said there's a miracle. I still have that to this day, man. The Amen. doctor printed it up, the first test and the second test. God still heals. Right. But it takes for us to believe who he says that he is. And so many times we either have fear or faith. We have one of the two. And having faith is so much better than walking around in fear and anxiety. Because when you have anxiety, man, it increases things in your body. It causes you to get sick. It causes you to feel bad. Just in your mind to take captive every thought. If we take a thought that runs through our mind that's not of God, it's not truth. And we can only worship in spirit and truth. Would you agree with that? Right. John 4, 24. Uh-huh. Okay. Right. And I'm just excited to, to share this today. Um, I don't know where this is going to go. I don't know what may come just by sharing this. Like I said, this is not some political stunt. This is not me against anybody. This is simply this, is I have 10 months this is actually 11, you know, today's uh, November, November 5th, I believe. And so I have, I have 10 months worth of data since I've got sick. And I know that there's not a lot of people who have 10 months worth of data. And that generally seems to be uh, what everybody's saying on news channels or broadcasts is that we just don't have enough evidence. And so today I come forth with my personal experience and my personal evidence to say, hey, 
I have proof that uh, natural immunity is a real thing. So God is true to his word. He is true to his and word. Did Jesus heal the leper or did he run from the leper? What scripture is that? Do you remember? Is it, is it Mark 4? Is that what it is? Yeah, so, so he actually, so he healed the leper. And what's amazing about Jesus healing the leper is that if you recall Leviticus for chapter 14, there's a lot of requirements that if you even came close to a leper, if you nudged them with your shoulder, if they were too close to you, you would have to go outside the temple with them. They weren't allowed inside the gates of the city, right? Yeah. Because of their sickness, because it was so contagious. But here's a man who, who's full of these, these pus, all this pus and sores and all of these things. And he falls at Jesus' feet and he says, Lord, if you're willing you can make me whole. And Jesus touches him, right? Which, which was, man, don't do it because then you're going to have to join him, right? You're going to lose your job and you're, you'll have to go outside. And so he didn't get back six feet and put on a mask and run from him. No. He, he ran up and went to him. Yeah, and, and, and he says, yeah. Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Yeah. And Jesus responded, I am willing. And then he said, be clean. And in that very moment, the leper was healed from his leprosy, right? And he went and told the whole city, of the, of the amazing, wonderful works of God. What do you think about society now, like relying more on, on uh, medications, relying more on, on man rather than on God? We see that a lot today. There's not a whole lot of faith put into God. There's a more faith put into man. What's the Bible say about that, about trusting man over God? Right, so Jeremiah 17, verses 5 through 7, talks about curses the man who trusts in man, right, and who makes his flesh his strength, right? And then it goes on to say a few verses later, but blesses man whose hope is in the Lord, right? Yeah. We know Proverbs 3, 5, it says that to trust in the Lord with all your heart, don't lean on your understanding, but acknowledge him in all your ways and he'll direct your paths. And then verse 7 says, uh, don't be wise in your own eyes, feel the Lord, fear the Lord and depart from evil. And one more uh, that comes to my heart is Isaiah 45, 22, that says, uh, look to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth, right? So God is saying, look to me, right? So, so when we see these things coming upon the earth and when we see these things happening, we're called as believers, right? As believers, as Christians, to look to the Lord. God is the healer, right? That's right, he is. He is Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha, exactly. Amen. He's the healing God, right? Again, in Psalm 103.3, he forgives all our iniquities and he heals all of our diseases. We've been called to come to him. He's all the great of our physician. diseases. There's nothing he can't heal. Right. There is nothing that God can't heal, and that's truth. Absolutely. There is nothing he can't heal. Right, so, so, so God is faithful, he's true to his word, and um, I'm just so grateful that uh, he is still working in me, he's protecting my body actively. So you were expectant, you were expecting him to do this. It wasn't something you were hoping for, you were expecting him to be true to his word, that your body was going to grow stronger. That right. God had already healed you, and he would continue to heal you and fight off any sickness or plague that came near your way. Because we know in the latter days there will be plagues that will come up on the earth, and man won't be able to stop these plagues. Right, and, and, and this is truthfully, I, I didn't expect to get the virus, right? So I prayed and asked God for protection. I asked God, you know, with our, our church here and our churches other, and elsewhere in other cities, I, I'd expected God uh, to protect us fully. And, and I believe that he did and he has and he continues to. Um, but I didn't expect to get it. And then when I got it, I was really surprised. Like, man, God, you know, I, I got this thing, you know, and I was just like, okay, you know, see what's going to happen. I didn't know what was going to happen, but it was so mild as that it's as if it still didn't touch me. Like I said, a couple hours worth of a fever. And then sure enough, I, uh, like I said, I lost my taste and smell and that, and that was it. And even my wife who, who got the virus as well, obviously from me, I'm assuming, um, she's had open heart surgery. So she has underlying health conditions and she obviously praise God. She came out completely good to go too. And so I'm assuming, um, you know, I can only speak for myself, but I'm assuming I have active protection. I've, I've had the virus. I have active protection today. I'm assuming that she has active protection herself or myself have not uh, got COVID again. So now we're going to the 11th month and, and, my, and my hope is, is that my journey to test and just to see uh, how I'm doing internally with, with antibodies or natural immunity, I hope to actually come January to take another antibody test and see where my antibodies are at at that time. All right, so why would you tell those, this is kind of a pointed question, why would you tell those who have died of COVID, their family members, or someone who has COVID right now and they're really sick, why would you tell them? Right, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Right, trust in the Lord. Um, God is faithful. His will is perfect. Right, I know plenty of people. Very, I love. There's so many that I love that I have personally lost, and I'm not questioning their faith. I'm not questioning where they were at with God. God's will is perfect, and I trust in Him because He knows better. And so, 
Um, whether he allowed, like I said earlier, whether he allowed, if I would have been taken out by the virus, then I would have been taken out. But I have a great hope because my hope and trust is in the Lord Jesus Christ. I've repented of my sins. I, by faith, trust in his gospel, which is his death, burial, resurrection. Amen. And because I trust in him, then I have eternity that's waiting for me, right? I've been saved from, from death itself. The problem of sin and death, Jesus took care for at the cross. So today, I'm ready to die, right? Like Paul says, for me to live as Christ, to die is gain. I'm ready to die today, whatever God sees fit, whether it's COVID, whether it's a car or whatever he has, I'm ready to meet him today. So I have a great hope that as Jesus resurrected from the grave, I too will also resurrect from the grave. So why would you tell this nation? Is there a scripture you'd like to share with, with America? Yeah, so... you think that they need to hear? So when back in March, um, when COVID first hit and I started working from home, because, well, COVID hit obviously previously before that, but when we really started feeling it as a nation in 2020, and I remembered uh, going to actually a Chevron gas station right next to my home, and I remember going to the Chevron gas station, getting something to drink. I actually don't remember all that I was getting, but nonetheless, I, I was getting something to drink, and I just was praying, and I was asking God, I was all by myself, Lord, what's going on? What's happening? You know, this virus, it's rampant. People are dying. What's, what's happening? And uh, sure enough, um, the verse uh, 2 Chronicles 7.14. What does that say? Came to my mind. Well, well, glad that you asked, obviously. And so when I read 2 Chronicles 7, starting in verse 13 to 14, I said, this is what the nation needs to hear. This is what we need to do as a nation. Right? So in 2 Chronicles 7.13, it says, God speaking, if I shut up heaven, that there's no rain. So if there's droughts. He continues, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, and for the sake of, of mentioning, pestilence means disease, right? Disease, sickness. Yeah. Verse 14, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. So if is a choice word. It's a conditional statement, you're right. It's if they will humble themselves. That's called humility. Right. And so many times we don't have all the answers. We don't. Doctors and scientists don't have all the answers. If they did, then there'd be a pill and it'd be, and you'd be cured instantaneously. Right. But the thing is, we have to put our trust in God. He's the one who's created us. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and God rewards us for putting our hope and our trust in him. And, and even with 2 Chronicles 7, 13 through 14, see... God is the one who brings on these things. He says, when I, right, bring forth, you know, drought, when I bring forth uh, uh, locusts, or when I bring forth pestilence, then the condition comes in, if my people, which are called by my name. And so the reality is, is we, have, we as a nation have sinned against God. We've broken his law. We've, we've rebelled against him. We've turned our back to him and not our face. And this is a call. This was a call that God, when, when the temple was established, God is telling Solomon, this is what you need to do. When these things come upon the land, this is what you need to do. This is the prescription for our nation and for our time. So do you think there's going to be a remnant that's going to stand strong? Absolutely. And be steadfast in these dark days and stand up and say, I'm trusting in God no matter what's going on. I'm going to trust in God. Me and my family are going to be steadfast and we're not going to be moved. Absolutely. It's happening right now. Amen. And so we as a nation... We need to humble ourselves. We need to repent of all the wickedness that what we've allowed. What does repent mean? What does that mean, mean for those who are watching? So, so, so biblically, repent means to change your heart, to change your mind. So your heart's got to be different. Huh? Right, right. So, so you change your heart, change your mind. It also means to turn from your wicked ways. Uh, Proverbs, so is it a heart condition? Do you think that it's a heart condition? Absolutely. Okay. And God promises to give us a new heart in Ezekiel 36, right? He'll give okay. us a new heart, new spirit, right? So that we can follow his ordinances, his statutes, his laws, so that we can do what he's commanded us to do. Um, but in Proverbs 28, 13, it says that, that if, we, if we cover our sins, it says we will not prosper. But if we confess and forsake them, we shall have mercy. And so that's what, I'm, that's what I'm seeing. And that's what I'm saying according to the word of the Lord. Is that if we as a nation, if we humble ourselves, if we pray and seek God's face, if we turn from our wicked ways, if we turn from all the wickedness we've done and allowed, allowed to continue to, to be done in our nation on this soil in the United States of America, if we turn from that, if we turn to God and humble ourselves, he says, I'll hear your prayer, I'll forgive your sin, and I'll heal your land. Our land is under turmoil. We need God. We need Jesus Even Christ. Even Jonah did that when he went, right? To Nineveh. 
Right. He, 40 days, he's going there sharing the word from God. It says, if you guys will repent, and they did repent, and the Lord saved them. They, they did repent. Perfect example, right? God's merciful and kind, and he's willing to forgive if we as a nation would, would turn from our wicked ways and return back to the Lord. And actually, that reminds me, if I can, to share one more. In Isaiah 55, uh, verses 6 through 7, it's written... Isaiah 55, verses 6 through 7, it says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way, the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. So we need to seek the Lord while he's, while he's near, while he can still be found, and we need to, to forsake our wicked ways. We need to run from that old lifestyle and the wickedness of sin. And all of us have been there. Return to Absolutely. 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 All sinners. Absolutely. So, so God is faithful. Um, he's proven it over and over and over again. I have 10 months worth of data that I want to share with not only with you, but with the world. I want to share that, that not only does, does God still heal, but that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. And by design, God has created our bodies to be able to fight against this virus. And so uh, I have 10 months worth of data. Like I said, it's going to be on the, uh, with the video so that people can see it and, and test it and look at it. And um, I'm just, I'm thankful to God uh, for healing my body and for protecting me against this virus. Would you like to say a prayer, wrap it up for those folks who are watching or maybe sick or have something going on? Or the last years they've been in just complete fear. Right. And would you like to pray for them? Absolutely. So Heavenly Father, we come to you right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I ask that you would heal everybody right now that is sick with COVID or cancer or whatever disease or sickness that, that, is, that there is right now. Lord, I thank you for your blood that you shed on the cross. I thank you for coming to this earth, for dying for our sin, for our iniquity, for our rebellion, for dying and raising again from the dead on the third day. I thank you, God, that you give us, every one of us, an opportunity to repent and to come and follow you. I thank you, God, that you have fearfully and wonderfully made us, and I thank you for protecting us, my God, from this virus, and I thank you for saving us to the uttermost, all those that go to you through the Son. God, we thank you, we give you praise. You are worthy, and uh, I pray that all nations, all people everywhere would seek you, my God, for you are the Savior, the only Savior. Thank you, God, for healing our bodies and saving our souls. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you for watching today. We appreciate it. Man, I pray this helps you out in your walk with the Lord with all these things that are taking place in America and the world.